Every so often, there is a moment in time that has the potential to change everything. This is one of those moments. You just simply replace I can't with how can I. It's not your fault when unfair circumstances knock you down. But it's always your responsibility to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and move yourself forward. And if you're going to think like MacGyver, if you're going to switch from I can't to how can I, say yes, yes. yes, yes. Okay, now it's time to get to work. Today, I want to I want to start and I want to finish with the same quote. And it's this. This isn't even a quote. This is a statement of truth. Holding no one but yourself accountable for the outcomes in your life is the most powerful thing you can do for your success. I'm going to say it one more time. Holding no one but yourself accountable for the outcomes in your life is one of the most powerful things you can do for your own success. I know I added a word or two in there, but you get the idea. It's a statement, not a quote. The blame game. The blame game. It's rigged. It's not a game you want to play. Trust me. It's like, you know those, you know when you go to the fair and you've got those misshapen basketball hoops, right? And you're kind of trying to get it in there and you, or the ones where you're knocking down the little milk jugs and all that. You know all that's rigged. Like all of it's rigged. It doesn't mean you can't win, but the odds of you winning are really, really low. It's not a round hoop, just in case you didn't know. It's, it's kind of like an oval shape, which makes it exponentially harder to get the basketball in there. Or the milk jug is offset a little bit, so you kind of, it's, it's more difficult for you, to, for you to get it figured out. Or they have all the fluff around the edges, so when you throw a baseball, you have to hit it right in the center to get that thing down. They know what they're doing. Well, the blame game, and for those of you who aren't familiar with, with what the blame game is, is when something goes wrong, you are, it's like a contest to figure out who other than yourself can you put the responsibility on. Who other than yourself can you blame for this thing going wrong? It's never you. That's the game. It's never you. It's got to be somebody else. Well, that game is rigged. In fact, it's worse than those because you'll never win. Ever. So we're going to talk about what to do instead. What to do instead. And there's five steps to the cycle of accountability. And look, this is coming from experience. I was, and I didn't even know it really. I didn't even know it really, but I was, I was playing the blame game. There were, you know, I've always had some level of success, a you know, hard worker, of course, and all that. But there was a time where when things went bad, I was looking around. Who messed me up? Who tripped me up? Who doesn't understand me? Who doesn't understand that? Who dropped the ball? It wasn't me, clearly. Because I always had a good intention, so I made the mistake of equating good intention to not having any fault or, or always supposed to have a good outcome. Just because you have a good intention doesn't mean the outcome is going to be awesome. That's a, that's a, that's, <laughs> that is not the case. So something would happen, right? I'd lose a deal or the funding round I thought was going to come in doesn't come in or just whatever it is. And it's always, as I'm reflecting back, right, it was always something else. And... What's interesting and what kind of sucks about the cycle of victimology, right, or victimhood versus accountability, if you're always the victim, it is, it is addicting, right? It's like a drug. It's like a drug. If you wire your brain to be negative, you wire your brain to always look for someone to blame, you will always find one. I say it all the time. If you're looking for something, the odds are you're going to find it. If you're looking for someone to disrespect you, you're going to find disrespect. If you're looking for something to complain about, you will find something to complain about. Now, conversely, if you're looking for something good, you'll find that too. And it's true. Now, in my own personal life, it wasn't until I started eating my own dog food, as they say. Because I would tell people that. But in my own situation, I would convince myself that my situation is a little bit more complicated. I'm a little bit different. I'm special. No, I'm not special. My situation is no, no more complicated than anyone else's. I had to take responsibility. And the minute I did, my income nearly tripled. My happiness went up. My stress went down. Now, 
let's just get something let's just get something out there let's let's be clear on this i'm not saying that other people aren't responsible for things happening i'm not saying that no one else is is at fault for things that you're involved with that's not what i'm saying at all but what i am saying is you can't control them at all you can't control how they respond you can't control what happens with or to them the only thing you can control is yourself so when you hold yourself accountable something really powerful happens you start looking for the right things that improve your situation and improve your life You see, when you take somebody down, the law of physics are at play here. When you take someone down, you're pointing the finger, you're saying it's your fault, your fault, your fault. You are going down with them. You're going to go down with them. There's no way you can't go down with them. That's just how it is, period. So what you may not be taking into account, if you go down with that person, now you've got to spend your time and effort climbing out of that nonsense. All right, so instead of all that nonsense, let's replace it with the cycle of accountability. Five steps. Number one, seek reality versus avoid reality. There were times when I was was 17, I just moved out, and I had some car trouble, and long story short, I had some financial trouble, and I knew the bills were being sent. I wouldn't even open them. At some point, I didn't even open the bills. That's an example of avoiding reality. The reality is I had some bills I had to take care of. But I figured, you know, like, for those of you with dogs, you know, like the dog will, like, make a mess or something or, like, tear something up, and they look away, right? When they're being scolded, they kind of look away. Like, if they look away, it goes away, right? Now, for them, it works. It's like, nope, didn't happen. Not looking over there going to avoid that unpleasantness. Well, it doesn't work for humans, at least. Not a good, not a good thing. Seek reality. If something's going on, seek it out. Find out. I'll add a little caveat. Don't freak out. Find out. Something could be bad. It could be very bad, like legitimately bad, but you don't know yet until you go find out. So that's the first thing is seek reality. Number two, acknowledge it. So once you know that it happened, acknowledge it. That means say it. Be upfront and call it out. This is what happened. This is what's going on. This is the situation. Whether it's you lost your job, whether it's something, there was an accident. Now this is for bad stuff, right? Good stuff, you don't have to practice the cycle of accountability because nobody has problems with that. There's nobody to blame when something goes good. But when things go bad, first you have to seek reality. That's number one. And then number two, acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Number three, we talked about this in the beginning. Own it. The alternative is to play the blame game. Don't play. It's rigged. Own it. Own it. Whatever it is, own it. It happened. I lost my job. There was an accident and the car is totaled. I dropped our anniversary glass in the sink And it's shattered. That's a real example, by the way. Whatever it is, own it. Own what happened. You seeked the reality. You acknowledged it. Now you have to own it. Even if this person's to to blame and that person's to blame, it doesn't matter. You have to become accountable for the outcomes in your life. Now, after you own it, now what do you got to do? Number four, find a solution. I did a podcast on overcoming being overwhelmed. And there was one part where if something bad happens that takes your energy away, you write down what happened, flip it over and answer the question, what am I going to do? Well, this is part of the cycle of accountability is find a solution. You've got to figure out what you're going to do. You only, you only have the ability to control your actions and how you feel. That's it. What you do, how you feel. So now it's time to take control of that thing what are you gonna do and then once you find that solution number five and the last step of the cycle of accountability is get to work get started right now 
You seek the reality. Good job. You acknowledged it, right? You own it. Instead of playing the blame game, you owned it. And then you found a solution. You worked hard. You found a solution. This is sometimes it's not easy. I mean, you, you know, you may have to be searching for a while, do some research or ask for some help, interview some people. Whatever you have to do, you find that solution. And when you do find that solution, get to work. Look, I hope this was helpful for you. We're going to wrap this up. I want to remind you that holding no one but yourself accountable for the outcomes in your life is one of the most powerful things you can do for your own success.